Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Monta Vista Unitarian Universalist Congregation on this gray day in May. I know it will lighten up as the day progresses. Um, quick reminder, let's return to the 1980s for an hour and turn off all of our electronics that are not needed <laughs> for your participation in the service. Uh, we're here this Sunday um, preparing to observe Memorial Day that recognizes those who have died while in the armed forces. And for some of us, we wish that would expand to collateral damage and not just war, but civil wars and <laughs> other things. <clears throat> no soapbox. Um, please read your weekly community connection that gets emailed. It's easy to find in your inbox. It's got rainbow hearts and then community connection. It jumps out. You should be able to find it without too much difficulty. Uh, please note the Kay Perlman's uh, 80th birthday party is on June 12th, and we're all invited. However, we need to RSVP before Friday. And her email address is in the announcements. It's a little difficult to read, but it is KB Perlman at AOL. Obviously a long time internet user. Please remember to vote in the June 7th election. Mail-in is going and advanced turn-in is available. The matching funds portion of our spirit level grant for technology has been met. Yes. You may continue your extraordinary support of our congregation by contributing to our spirit level grant for facilities refresh on and on. Our pledges received for 2022-2023 are close to 100,000. If you have not yet pledged, please do so. And please remember, you can pledge if you're not a member, but you still want to be here. Taco Tuesday each Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And a major thank you to John Smallstig and his friend and Bob Taylor for cutting the weeds in the North 40. And to Bob and Josh Gibson for spreading the chips around. Bob had, Bob rented a skip loader and big mechanical monster and just boom, 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 boom and took all those piles down and got it spread around. It looks really nice. So, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Boy, it's so nice to watch this room fill up so instantly. It's great. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to our guests. I see a few new faces, and I also see some who are visiting. So we welcome you, Carrie. It's nice to have you back. Back among us, where you belong. <laughs> where we keep you in our hearts. Yeah. We open our service here at Monta Vista with the ringing of the bowl. We ring it once for those who have come before. The indigenous peoples, the original stewards of this land, the Tongva and others who have called it home long ago, 
We also honor our ancestors and the founding members of this congregation who imagined it over 70 years ago. We ring it once for those of us who are here, here and now. For our members and friends, visitors, our staff, and our extended UU family all over the world who hold, care, and grow this beloved community that we know as our own. And we ring, we ring it once for those who will come. For those who will find belonging here with us and call this their spiritual home in the days ahead. I invite you, if you're here in the sanctuary, to stand and we're gonna to sing together. We made a little medley out of two of our favorite songs. First we'll sing Gather the Spirit and then we'll go right into Spirit of Life. So stand as you're comfortable and sing out. For those of you at home on Zoom, I invite you to stand too if you wish, but please sing along. The words will be on your screen.
you. Everyone, please be seated except Steve. <laughs> Steve, I invite you to come and light our new chalice. Well, it's a month old. <laughs> but it's still new to us, isn't it? It's still special. Our time together in worship is intimately connected with the meaning that we make in our daily lives. As a symbol of that connection and in the tradition of our Unitarian Universalist faith, we light our chalice with a flame that honors our time together and designates this sanctuary as our shared sacred space. By this light, we open this gathering into a circle of community, reminded that we are each precious to its forming and that our best outcome is found in our love for one another and for our broken world. Hear now the words of author Mark Nepo. My soul tells me we are all from the same nameless heart, and every living thing wakes with a piece of that original heart aching its way into blossom. This is how we know each other. Why, when we fall, we lift each other, or when in pain, we hold each other. Why, when sudden with joy, we dance together. Our lives are the many pieces of that great heart loving itself back together. I invite us now to all read the words of our covenant that we have agreed to make a part of our Sunday service. Thank you, Lily. Love is the doctrine of this congregation. The quest of truth, its sacrament, and service is its prayer to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve the world in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other. Now I invite Letha, our floatus, well, kind of, <laughs> our first lady. <laughs> I don't know if I've mentioned this to the congregation yet, but our director of lifespan religious education is at home with a positive COVID test. So yeah, so we can send Robert all our good energy and our prayers. And Letha will fill in for him today. Thank you. Lisa. So when we tell the story to the kids down in RE, we let them know which principle does this story apply to. Today, it's the blue. Believe in our ideas and act on them. The story is The Umbrella Sanctuary by Tim Atkins. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who got caught in a sudden rainstorm. She ran inside to the nearest store to wait out the weather. As soon as she closed the door, a bright flash and a loud boom of thunder followed. The little girl screamed, and she knew that she would be stuck in that store for a while. She started to look around at some of the different items in the store when the shopkeeper appeared. The shopkeeper was the oldest the little woman the little girl had ever seen. Her hair was as white as snow, and her face was quite wrinkly. The little girl was brave enough to admit that she was a little scared. Young woman inquired the shopkeeper, can I help you with something? The little girl pointed outside, too afraid to talk. Ah, uh, did you run in here to escape the rain? The little girl nodded slowly as another loud boom of thunder shook the store. Well, you can wait here if you'd like in my little sanctuary. We've got a nice dirty roof over our heads and it will keep you safe and dry. The little girl appreciated the offer, but she really needed to get outside and continue on her way. The crone shopkeeper could tell the little girl was hesitating. Or, she continued, you could head back outside with this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was thunder, lightning. So we've got an umbrella. I don't know where to put it. Not there. Behind me. I'll hold it. 
It was recommended. Take this umbrella, said the woman. I don't know why it's raining, but I do know that you can keep dry under this portable sanctuary. The little girl beamed and then stopped in her tracks. But I don't have any money, said the little girl. The shopkeeper waved her off. No worries, little girl. Just be sure to offer the umbrella to someone else when they need it. The little girl accepted the umbrella, headed outside, and went on her way. And she was happy and dry as she started skipping down the street. She was just a few steps from the store when she saw a man wearing a suit, trying to keep dry with a newspaper over his head. Right then, another loud boom of thunder came, and she noticed that the man's newspaper was beginning to fall apart under the heavy rain. She skipped over to the man in the suit and held the umbrella up as high as she could. Thank you, said the man. Remembering the words from the crone shopkeeper, the little girl told the man, I don't know why it's raining, but I do know that you can keep dry with me under this portable sanctuary. The man sighed in relief. He had been having a really bad day. See, he was wearing a suit because he was on his way to a job interview. He had been without work for a long, long time and was desperate. He had to walk to the interview because he couldn't afford a car. When it started the rain, he knew it was just his luck that he would show up to his really important job job interview soaked, and he knew it would make a really bad first impression. Out of the blue, the little girl spotted her family in the store across the street. Here, said the little girl, take the umbrella with you. I must catch up with my family right over there across the street. Oh, I can't take your umbrella, said the man, feeling guilty. Please take it. Just be sure to offer the umbrella to someone else when they need it. The little girl put the umbrella into his hands and then ran to, off to meet her family. The man knew he was so fortunate and he was surprised at, by how nice the little girl was to him. He knew he had to hurry though because it was almost time for his interview. Another boom of thunder caused him to start running. Well, I can tell you that the man got his job he was interviewing for and it wasn't long before he was able to buy a few umbrellas of his own. Whenever it would rain, he would hand out, he would bring not only his umbrella, the very one the little girl had given him, but he would bring along two or three more to give away to people who were stuck outside in the rain. Every time he gave away an umbrella, he would say, I don't know why it's raining, but I know that you can keep dry under this portable sanctuary. Soon, everyone in town had an extra umbrella that they would take with them. If the townspeople passed by someone without an umbrella, they would give up their own umbrella and pass on the words now known by the entire town. I don't know why it's raining, but I know that you can keep dry under this umbrella sanctuary. And so ends our story. Do we have any children with us today, Letha? No? no. Okay. You know what, though, Lily, do you mind, you folks mind, we'll, we'll sing through the recessional song just so it becomes more familiar to us for the next time we do have our kids with us. message today comes from a reading number 674 in our Singing the Living Tradition hymnal. Let there be an offering. Let there be an offering to sustain and strengthen this place, which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and of hope 
for we are now the keepers of the dream. When Reverend Lovely wrote these words, he had no way to know how they would bring truth and meaning to us in this year of so much unusual experience. For those of us dream keepers, we are, and we are struggling. Some of us are struggling with financial responsibilities, and we all hold hope for a better day forward in the days just ahead. And for those of us among us who are less affected by the financial stress of the world right now, we will step in and cover you like an umbrella sanctuary until that day comes. But while together we hold hearts full of hope for all of the gifts of this beloved community, whether it is time, talent, or treasure, we are so very deeply grateful and we promise to be good stewards of our shared dream. For our beloveds in the Zoom sanctuary, we invite you to visit our donation link that Lily will put in the chat box. Thank you, Lily. You can also find a donate button near the bottom of your online order of service, and you can click that early and often, getting ready for election day. <laughs> we also invite those at home to use the postal service to mail your offerings and pledges to our address here in Montclair. But for those of us here in the sanctuary, I invite you to please come forward with your generous offerings and donations for the Beta Center at the Inland Valley Hope Partners or Cane's Cupboard. For we are the keepers of the dream, and it is with both celebration and gratitude that our offering will now be given and received. Beautiful, Lily. Thank you so much. One of the elements of our worship each week is a time of celebrating the things that are weighing us down, which seem to be more than abundant lately, but also the joys that we are holding and the hope we're holding in life. I invite those who are in our Zoom sanctuary, and I see we have 17 connections, so thank you for being here. Zoom people, <laughs> our Zoom church, I'm grateful for you if you have a joy or concern. It's helpful if you type joy or concern at the beginning of the message that you're entering, but I can read it here. Any in the chat? No. So I invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer, please. Spirit of life and love, source, of many names. We inhale together as community as we join here in a conspiring breath to become aware of love more fully and to see beyond what we believe we know to be true toward greater awakening, connection, healing, and growth. May our love shine forth from this place and from the sanctuary of our hearts that others may know that acceptance, community, love, and belonging are the gifts that we bring. And with deep gratitude for life and for the chance we always have to choose love again and always, we connect with the spirit of life that we see in each other, with all others, and with the stars. Blessed be and amen. I invite you to remain seated and just sit in a little restful position as we'll sing a pastoral hymn. It's number 396 in our hymnal. The lyrics will be on the screen. And Lily will lead us in, I know this rose will open. We're going to do it in rounds. Can we, we've been having fun with doing rounds, so we had the bride side and the groom side. I don't know if we can do that again. We can do it, yes. Why don't we do... Um number one and three only. So let's have this side sing number one, and that side will come in on number three, uh, which if you don't have the hymnal, you will not know where that is, so. Okay. <laughs> I guess, yeah, we can point. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, and then we sing it once through, everyone together. And I'm gonna play it once through, then we all sing it once, and then we do it two times as a round. So what page is that? 
It's 396. Okay. wasn't awful. <laughs> Our reading for today comes from Audette Fulbright. She's the associate minister at the UU Church in Manhattan, known as um, the Church of All Souls in New York City. If you find yourself numb and bereft of comfort, speechless with agony and fury, know that you're not alone. The first thing you must do is take care of yourself as the good gift that you are, and then of those whose lives make your life whole. And next, do just one good thing to change this tide. Speak to one person. Write one thing from your heart. Show up in one place where hands are needed. We don't need to explain this madness to anyone because we are all living it together. We see the inaction and the tidal wave of trauma and suffering. We understand the hypocrisies and the lies, the way attention rises and then fades away and the helpless feeling that it all engenders. And yet, we know we are not helpless. So take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones and offer care to your community do at least one kind thing. That's the way we'll go forward together. The piece is entitled, Try to Remember. It's from the musical, The Fantastics, which was a 1960s musical. And it is sung by the character Ogago. Thank you, Maddie. It's so beautiful. Yes, remember, try to remember. I am just longing for those days when the events of the week don't bring me back to my desk to rewrite my sermon. Writing any sermon is a heart quest, and each message needs to be relevant to the lives that we share. And stepping into this pulpit and speaking the message that will encourage you and love you and strengthen you is not to be taken lightly. And I want you to trust that from the marrow of my bones, I promise that I won't. But oh, how I wish, how we all wish that this past week had been very different. One of my fellow seminarians, a dear UCC colleague who's celebrating the one-year anniversary of his ordination this week, Reverend Kirk Johnson, sent me a text to thank me for my role in his online ordination. 
We chatted back and forth and then we just paused to agree with no small amount of trembling that we have our work cut out for us. We also agreed that our time together in seminary at Drew Theological School could in no way have prepared us for the days that we're in right now. Knowing that we have our work cut out for us gives us a certain amount of backbone, though, and camaraderie, and fills us with gumption to do something. It gives us a clearer sense of our calling as Unitarian Universalists and asks that we tighten our belts and without having any guarantee of a green pasture to come except for our beautiful pasture that Bob created for us. Thank you. No clear sailing ahead, but clear sailing isn't why we're here. It's not what we were called to. While working on last week's sermon message, I felt confident asking that we be courageous and that we begin to laugh again. We were certain that laughing more was not only a good idea, but it was healthy for our bodies, our minds, and our spirits, and that that was truly possible until Tuesday. Taking breaks from the grief and coming up for air when the tsunami of sadness takes us out is essential to our well-being. We are not betraying the victims or slacking on our call to justice by tending to our heartache and coming together and resting from the news in order to avoid the trauma and its impact on our souls. By coming here, by being together, no matter how we connect, in order to hold another in community and offer a warm smile, we are instead creating the world that perhaps that shooter needed. We don't know. So we rest and we smile and we support one another to strengthen ourselves as one faith family, to steady our heart sick souls and to serve one another at a time when the world keeps showing us how much work there is left to do. On this weekend that since the Civil War has been marked as a time of ritual and remembrance for those who have died in military service, we remember the lives of the children in Uvalde, Texas. We also remember the doctor in Laguna and those who dared to be shopping for their groceries in Buffalo, New York. And we hold the resonance of their loss of life in another type of civil war. We lament that there is death at all as our sense of loss seems equal to our sense of frustration. Yet swirling within the flow of our tears, love remains. Love endures and love will win. Love for the lives that were lost on the battlefield. Loves for the innocent taken without warning. There is no difference. Our view of our nation's history is already riveted with regret that it has taken us so long to see the need to save the lives of our children. There is work to do, and we are here to do all that we can. I believe that what we do matters, and it brings change. And I believe that we will have the courage to do what is needed of us. I believe that we will remember and we will honor those who have died and that we have the chance to be among the ones to finally bring some relief. That we, our generation, were the ones who finally put an end to this carnage. I believe we can. That we had a hand in bringing a new world of justice and peace. 
I believe that that's possible. And I believe that that world is not only possible, but it's very close. And it is coming. I invite you to believe with me, to breathe with me, and to bring it with me. But now we grieve. Now we grieve for those young lives, for the doctor, for our family members, our relatives in Buffalo. Created a little ritual for us. Lily, if you wouldn't mind playing behind this, I'd like to invite each of us to come forward. Leave a little space between yourselves as you come, just not just because of the masking thing, but just sacred space for each person to take one of the rocks on our altar and hold it for a minute and drop it into the water is your prayer and your promise to be your best self and to bring what you're being asked to bring so that this flip can happen and we can change the entire world by doing that. I believe that can happen. Believe with me. Come with me. Bring it with me. Thank you. Please come forward. I'll now put one more in for all of those who are joining us on Zoom and unable to participate, and also one for Jimmy. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask you to sing. I tried to match it to what I thought the ritual would create, but one never knows. So Lily, if we could start singing our closing song more prayerfully, and maybe, yeah, you work your magic. <laughs> um, we're at number, hymn number 163. The lyrics will be on the screen. For the earth forever turning. Beautiful. Steve, if you would come and extinguish our chalice, I invite everyone to read the words together from reading number 456. You should find them in your order of service. By Elizabeth Sell Jones, we extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of this community, or the fire of our commitment. We carry these in our hearts until we are together again. May our time together today continue to bless you. May the week ahead be one of more justice, more love, and more healing hope. And may we know that it is our work to make it so. Amen and blessed be.